Well, I've been on Team Sony for over a decade now, which feels weird to say out loud. I first started with a basic point-and-shoot camera. This is the Canon PowerShot SD1200 IS. Still have no idea what those initials stand for after all these years. This is what I first started shooting with many, many moons ago. At the time, the specs on this thing were advanced. There was autofocus, a bunch of shooting modes, which a lot of digital cameras had back then, and the largest photopixels are almost 4K. Where it falls short is the video recording. Understandable though, because it's a camera for photos, not video, but the max resolution is 640 by 480 pixels. Even back then, what could you do with that? That's nothing. It's been officially retired, but it can still be found on secondhand websites like eBay. Actually, I think it was a different power shot that I had first, and this is my second one. I sold the other one in order to upgrade to this one. Point and shoots have been making a comeback lately, especially on social media, and I'm so glad I never got rid of mine. If you're new here, my name is Erin Donahue. I'm a multi <laughs> If you're new here, my name's Erin Donahue. I'm a multidisciplinary. <laughs> if you're new here, my name's Erin Donahue. I'm a multidisciplinary photographer based in New York City. <laughs> in this video, I'm challenging myself to use some of my old gear and see what I come up with. I've actually been consolidating a lot of my camera gear over the years. I'm not a fan of overdoing it with the gear acquisition syndrome. Also, this challenge reminded me just how much photography has really changed over the years. Before mirrorless cameras democratized the photography industry, cameras were really, really expensive. And they're still pretty pricey, don't get me wrong, especially full-frame cameras. But back then, it was virtually impossible to get an interchangeable lens camera. A DSLR, if you will. Unless you were really wealthy or you saved up forever. I actually never owned a DSLR. I went straight from a point-and-shoot to a mirrorless. I first had a Sony a6000, then I got an a6300, and then upgraded to the a6400. So APS-Cs were really what helped me break into the photography industry. But even before that, my introduction into photography was an old school film camera, an SLR camera. I inherited a Canon AE-1, but in my high school, I think I was given a Nikon to use instead. I even got to develop the film in the dark room in my school, and I can still remember what the chemicals smell like. It lingers in my memory to this day. I need to get my Canon AE-1 fixed or checked at least, because I don't think I could really use it. I haven't tried either. <laughs> but what I do use are the interchangeable lens that I got from it. Using a PhotoDX Pro adapter, I put it onto the FD lenses and attach it to my mirrorless camera. This allows me to blend the old with the new, and personally, I prefer that. I can achieve the film look without buying the film, looking for a store to develop the film, and waiting for that processing time. Because these lenses are inherited, I simply use a 50mm 1.8, aka the Nifty 50, and it's a great lens. Pretty sharp, actually. Where it starts to show its quote-unquote vintage-ness, if you will, is when it's open wide at 1.8. But I think that's something that can be leaned into, and is what gives these SLR lenses its character. I also have a 135mm prime with a converter for extra zoom, but there are very minimal situations to use this particular lens for. By having an SLR lens on my mirrorless camera, I'm able to use it normally and have digital photos immediately. This challenge also has me reflecting on what is my style and what do I want to say with my photography. As you all know, or I hope you do, photography is more than just pressing the shutter and taking a picture. Photography is an art form. But I still have a hard time seeing myself as an artist, even after all these years. And maybe that's where my problem lies. I still haven't gotten my mindset right. Real talk, ever since I left my corporate job to go into a creative field, I have been on one hamster wheel to the next and I've been completely overtaken by the social media world and just focusing on spitting out quantity over quality. However, I do believe that's how you get better and there's also merit to that approach. The well-known experiment where the art teacher divides her class in half, where one half focuses on quantity and the other focuses on quality. It turns out the one that was focusing on quantity had better results. And for me, what I have definitely improved upon is my efficiency, my workflow, and I have started to build that eye. It's just, I still don't know what I want my style to be. Do you get what I'm saying? So as I continue to evolve as a photographer, I need to remind myself to slow it down when I can and really think about what making art is. So let's see what we can create with these new tools. <laughs> 